November 21st at 8 p.m. We're going to have a great comedy show at the Miami Improv known as Elephants in the Room. It's going to be an amazing time. Can't wait to see you there. Hey, before I let you go, can I give you a joke? Why did the elephant have a bad trip? He forgot to pack his trunk! <laughs> now, nobody's coming to our show. Yeah, I was... Uh... <laughs>
right? When the whole point of it is, is that I need to stop and slow down so I can actually learn the thing, not just achieve it for the sake of achieving it, right? I agree. Yeah. Daisy, I want to say right now, thank God you and me never had a class together. Why? Because you are totally this type of personality. You're the person to ask the teacher, hey, is there any more homework you can give me? Or hey, is there any more assignments? You are the per you know the you are the person oh I hate this person so much. <laughs> you are the person that like say you forgot doing the homework one class and you've made it throughout the full class period. The whole new lecture has been started and everything. Classes you're about to get out of class. You're about you're about you're packed up your bag, you got on your back, and you're just looking at the, the big hand and you're like, Oh, it's gonna make it. We're gonna make it. I'm not gonna get zero, I'll turn in this paper late, and everyone's gonna be fine. And then right like at the the nth hour, right at the zero hour, there's always this one person it's who's me. like, Hey, hey, professor, you're gonna collect the homework and you're like, like this. <laughs> I'm raising my hand in the back like this, like, <laughs> hey, hey, teacher, oh didn't you have God. homework? Didn't, were we supposed to turn something in? That's definitely me. Oh, my gosh. Oh my and I, But God. the thing is, okay, mm -hmm. I'm aware of that. Okay. And actually, <laughs> back in high school, I have to say I was too into, like, being cool to be that person. Like, I didn't want to be that person. <laughs> but for me, I don't know what it is. Like, the inner nerd is just blooming and full force and i'm like this needs to calm down <laughs> because i happened to be in a class actually i was in this class and the guy's like <clears throat> okay it, the assignment was given on a sunday um the assignment wasn't clear because in the lecture he had said okay you got to do this but then when he wrote it out he didn't add one of the parts in mm -hmm. so it's maybe like wednesday or thursday and i'm getting anxious about it because i'm like okay he didn't write the fact that we are supposed to do this but he said it in class so what am i supposed to do so i'm all confused nobody has asked a question so i go and ask the question mind you it's like two days before we have to turn in the assignment <laughs> and i go hey teacher like you said in class but i don't see it written he's like oh yeah thanks for reminding me daisy here let me put it in the thing and i was dying <laughs> because first of all i just added all this pressure on myself because i wasn't ready to add another assignment i was hoping he'd say no but he was like yeah thank you daisy you're right and then he added the assignment so now i have like the stress of that and then i'm like um messaging all my friends like oh my gosh i'm so sorry i didn't mean to add another assignment midweek we only have two days to do this <laughs> how long do the replies take to come back to you how, how long so like it was like an hour later I was like okay <laughs> you know how you can feel like the 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 pent up frustration with a person you're texting with over the text yeah oh my god <laughs> And then they like try to appease me and they're like, Daisy, it's okay. Like I was kind of wondering that too, but I know you're pissed. Like I know you're pissed because I'm pissed too, <laughs> but I need to know. <laughs> and you know what? Like this, these last two weeks I started to realize because I had this really heavy assignment where mm -hmm. they, I had to do, it's a lot of like mathematical in this drawing, like a lot of math and I'm not good with that. So I've had to slow down. And slowing down isn't allowing me to overachieve, but I am digesting the information the way I need it to. Yeah. So then I had to like tell myself, you know, it's not about making the assignment. It's about learning it for myself because this is for my job. And so, and whatever the teacher, whatever they were expecting, if I couldn't participate or I couldn't give it to them how they wanted it. Well, the takeaway is that I actually learned. So I think that's the bigger takeaway than let me give you the 20 drawings that you're asking for me, which is a big thing for me, Raul. <laughs> it's really big. I bet it is. I and it lifted it the burden. Now I'm like easygoing. I'm not screaming at Eric. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm more like at peace with what I'm doing. So it was a big realization for me. Let me ask, have you? I, I encounter this with comedy and I encounter this when like I host a show or um, just like in my progression, um, even at my day job, how, are you encountering that you're getting 
really good at certain aspects of your career that you thought was going to take you a lot longer when you started, but now are like insurmountably shorter. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Why do you say that though? Cause that's something I've encountered recently and is an expectation. Like I, mm-hmm. I used to have an expectation that it was going to take me a lot longer to get decent at comedy and decent at performing. And I've gotten way better. I've gotten insurmountably better. Um, I'll tell you this. Um, this is the cockiest thing I'm going to say for this month. Okay. I know sometimes I say some cocky stuff. You only get one for the month. This is my one for the month. I will probably say I'm the best comedy host in all of South Florida. And that includes Fort Lauderdale, first. West Palm Beach, Boca. I will put I will put my my act and my presentation, who I am, against any other host out there, any other comedian any other host any other mc and i feel like i will always come up on top Mm -hmm. is the one thing i've become very very confident in my skills like it's probably the most comfortable thing i do on stage and on on like a showcase um besides that like i just that was something i thought was gonna take me forever because it was like a rut like it was a hard uh go around for me to get better and it, it sometimes it's like in a matter of a few days or in a matter of months, it becomes so much fluid and so much. I don't know if it's like the muscle memory of, of the activity or just my experience now that I have doing it, but it's become so, so, so much easier for me um, that I have total. I can go to a show like last minute. I actually did a show this last Wednesday um, that was. Uh, a friend called me a like, hey, um I have a situation. Uh, I can't make, I can't host a show. Do you mind picking up hosting it for me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem, bro. I got, I did my day job, got home to work. I mean, got home from work, hung out with my family a little bit, took off to the show. And it was actually a spectacular show. Nice. Spectacular, really, really good show. <laughs> um, and I just feel that. I feel that confidence and that comfort um, doing it. Uh and uh, it's it's definitely an expectation that I used to be like, man, I'm I don't know if I'm ever going to be a good host. Now mm-hmm. I feel like now I'm a good host. I am the best host. <laughs> That's and right. Burr, burr, from, burr. from Tampa down, I'll say from right under Tampa down, I'm yeah. probably the best host in that region. Yeah, I'll make that argument. Yeah, That's awesome. Dude, so. I mean, could you say it's because. I don't know. You've been hosting for a while, right? Yeah. I mean, you host on podcasts. You host in the comedy shows. You host at Bingo Nights. Yeah. It's sort of like I I go through that, too. Like, I have to tell myself. <laughs> I start to realize that I don't want to get cocky, right? Like, you, you, sh- you feel almost as though that your ego is boosting because you've done something for so long. You know you're good at it. Yeah. And you don't want to rub it in people's faces or whatever, but it's also kind of coming around to it and saying, man, I am pretty great at what I'm doing, but you've also earned it, you know? Yeah, How long have yeah. you been hosting now? So uh, here's a, a little tip or trick of the trade for anyone else to be a comedian, an MC, anything like that. If you want to be better at comedy, I recommend strongly become a host become a host it's a job that not many people want to do it puts you in pressure pressurized situations and it gets you ready for like crowd work it gets you ready to perform at a moment's notice um you don't have this buildup of anxiety because you just gotta do it Uh, and it's uh, some people i used to feel this way for example i used to feel that being on the showcase, like being a feature act or being a, even a headliner was the easier task because you didn't have to deal. All you had to do was your material. You didn't have to worry about the, the audience. You didn't have to worry about the patrons of the venue or anything like that. Now I feel because I have such a good command. I actually got a lot of compliments recently and a few shows that like I have such a command of the audience now 
that I don't, I don't stress that too much now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm very, I feel like I can hone in with the audience that the audience can relate to me and my message. And it's become very, very easy now where it used to be like the scariest thing for me. Did you find that you were before, before you got to this point, were you having a lot of anxiety around hosting? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah because and how did you find that point? Like when did it switch? <laughs> you just gotta keep doing it. You got mm -hmm. it's like Malcolm Gladwell has this famous uh, Malcolm Gladwell is a famous writer. And he has a few famous books. One of his books is called Outlier. And I forgot there was another one. And there's this equation. There's like this important number. It's called ten thousand hours. So if you do something close to or near 10,000 hours, you would be considered a master of that one thing. Mm -hmm. So a great example of that, there's a basketball player. Uh, he used to play for Miami. He's played all across the uh, NBA. His name is Ray Allen. Ray Allen is considered one of the greatest long range shooters in the NBA history in basketball history. He's a hall of famer. He's a champion, whatever. He was shooting, he was practicing shooting three pointers, shooting long range shots his whole life, like more than like the average NBA player to the point that you can say that he has been doing it for sure. Just doing one shot for over 10,000 hours. And he is probably one of the most trusted shooters of all time. Mm -hmm. um, he has the most famous shot in NBA history, in my personal opinion. And, um, he like that's the level it's kind of um have you ever been to like a really good car mechanic and see how fast it can change a tire mm -hmm. like kind of like that mm -hmm. is that you're just doing it's not a full scope it's not a full career or a full um uh job but like one aspect of that job you do better than anyone because you've been doing it just over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over and over again. It's one of the reasons why apprenticeships are so important is so you can learn the little tasks and do them at a, a speed and a rate and an efficiency that a person that didn't do the apprenticeship would never have. Mm -hmm. so what you, but you didn't answer my question. Like, oh, when, well, did, I'm sorry. <laughs> when did it switch for you? When did the, <sighs> like, when were you out a about a year yeah. and a half ago? About a year and a half ago, two two big things. One was um, so I started hosting like really big shows, mm -hmm. like three hundred people shows. So I would do one for the town of Cutler Bay. Um, I actually am doing it again this year, um, and that would get like one hundred fifty people in a uh, in a high school um, auditorium. Mm -hmm. Then I also because I was doing the Comic Con shows and the comic convention shows. Were there, I was getting 350 people. So it didn't matter at that point. It became mm -hmm. like I needed to do this. I need, I couldn't let fear freeze me and, and, and hold me up. I had to just go with it. And if I fail, I fail. Mm -hmm. That That's the only, I think a lot of times when we don't do an activity or we don't want to pursue a dream or we don't pursue something we really want to do, we're afraid of failure failing style mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which is why we like made this whole thing <laughs> this is the one reason we made this whole yeah. thing mm -hmm. and i the fear of failure left me uh, for at least this thing because i loved it's one of the reasons i know i love comedy so much is because i don't care if i fail mm -hmm. i want to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it um and it's it's uh it's proven to me why i love this so much why well, i love doing what i do so much but it, it's also broke that barrier in me it didn't feel it i didn't like it wasn't like a moment of like anxiety left my body mm -hmm. but it was a moment that i broke through in my mind mentally and i can see like okay this is the path forward this is what i have to do mm -hmm. so yeah dude like for me um that was a mental thing that I had to break through too, going through my art stuff. Cause for me, it almost felt as though I had to uh, just do the most, right? And I always could, it's, it's the comparison trap. Like you wanna compare yourself to other people, you think you can't do it. But 
you forget that everyone starts somewhere and um and i didn't have enough confidence back then to be like you know i i think we talked about this before like the imposter syndrome or whatever not realizing my full potential but when i look back at my life i'm like i've been drawing since i was like in preschool dude you know <laughs> like yeah. this is meant for me and this is something that i just need to hone in the fact that it's so scary is because the competition is high right and that's what you're up against but when you love it so much it, it's not even about like you're going to get there, right? Because you love it so much. It's it's what you're putting your time and energy into that there's no way that you can't get there. And that's what I broke through too. Like, yeah, right now it's not at the industry level, but now I'm telling myself, you know what? I'm not at the industry level right now, but in a few years I will be because, I mean, what else, man? I can only go up from here, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, Again, if you asked me two years ago that I was gonna have my own improv show, if uh, man, there's there's a big announcement I haven't made yet on this podcast, and it's just that I don't have it like official, official. But like, there are bigger things that are coming for me. That if you told me two years ago that this was a possibility, I would have been like, "You're full of it. Like this is mm -hmm. not possible." I was so afraid. I, I was such a a green. Uh, that's so usually a term for rookie. Like, a, I was just really bad at comedy, even though I studied it, even though like I am in love with it. I was, I will be honest, I was very, very bad at comedy. That now I'm like, I'm much more of a sharper edge than I used to be, and I'm much more confident of traveling, doing comedy. I'm much more comfortable. That was another big one, actually. Now thinking about it, like, I went to uh, California, with my family, with my brother and my sister in law. And we did two, I did two shows out there in California and I did good. I didn't, nice. I didn't expect my, my comedy. It was actually one of my biggest fears that I was like a regional comic that I didn't think my comedy style would travel to other States. And I did good mm. and, that, and those comedy shows. And it was like, man, okay, there is something, there's something, there is, there's good, uh, fertile ground here and yeah. that, that can make something grow. It's kind of like, am I global? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that starts to creep in. And you're like, all right, settle down. It'll be fine. Like, we'll see. Because <laughs> yeah. that too, right? Like, you start to realize things about yourself. And then um, you got to check your ego at the door too. Yeah. Like, realize that it's taking you a long time to get here. And, and like, even though you're the best in the uh, in your regional state right now, there's always going to be someone that's better than you. But who's to say, like, one day you will be the best or you are the best and it's okay to simmer in that moment. But it's also um, humbling yourself and saying, you know, I'm the best right now, right? And yeah. if I don't keep at it, if I don't keep up the speed or this momentum, if I just let it go and sit in that for too long, then I can all be taken away, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that, it, yeah, I guess that goes back to expectations. Like maybe it's better just not to have any and just work on the bigger purpose, the bigger idea of why you're doing this and yeah. what you love about it and focusing on that. Right. Yeah. I can tell you, I've already experienced this a little bit in my life. The comedians or the people who start doing comedy because they think they're going to get famous quick are the ones that burn out the quickest. They're the mm -hmm. ones that like they they maybe they come up with a good five or type five, and they're like, oh yeah, I can make it, I can make it, I make it, and then they lose the luster for it, they lose the taste for it, and they want to get the hell out. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that quite a few times already. Is people who love the process, you have to love it. Like you gotta want to go to a horrible bar in the middle of the night, uh, do five minutes in front of like the bartender and maybe one 70 year old person. And like, <laughs> and you gotta like, love it. You gotta love that part of it. Mm -hmm. Some people hate, despise that part of it. 
I like it. I yeah. know it sounds so weird for a thing. I like doing that. It's all, it's what it's all about, right? That's what it's all about. It like is. that that for me too. I was getting to that burnout stage quick cuz I had that like back to what I was saying before that anxious overachiever in me, right? <laughs> like I need to I need to be the best. I need to fulfill whatever they're asking from me. But yeah. I've had to turn that on its head because I do love the process and I was losing that in that overachievement and that anxiety. I was losing it because I was so caught up in just performing well, not for myself, but for somebody else. And then I changed that and now I'm saying, you know what, this is for me. Like I enjoy this process. I'm not gonna let something outside of me dictate how I go about my art because then once I let that go, the your craft just starts to sing, right? Like, yes. it's like, oh, like, I really do love this process. It's so like beautiful to just create and see something come out of me that I didn't expect that I didn't have 10, 30 minutes ago, you know? I, I know that feeling. Well. Yeah. I, I want to state because I feel like I suck at a lot of parts of my life. I want to say that <laughs> real quick. Yeah. Um, like I'll even say talking, talking on stage, talking on podcasts, I'm great at interpersonal conversations. I suck at, I'm really bad at it. Uh -huh. I'm really bad at being like connective and being like one. Sometimes I feel like I have, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm mentally inca incapable of it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say the word, but like, um, I struggle. I definitely struggle parts of my life. I get a lot that like people ask me, why are you not the same role that you are on stage that you are in person? Like, Cause it's like, those are two huge aspects <laughs> of my life, two uh -huh. different. I'm working. I'm on the clock mm -hmm. when I'm on stage, when I'm with, I'm very, I, I hate saying this. I'm a very, and spoiler, I'm a very subdued, very laid back, like not that energetic person <laughs> off the stage. Uh -huh. I, and it's it's just part of who I am. It's not that I'm being two faced or anything like that. It's just that th this is a part of my life that I feel like I excel at. Mm -hmm. And there's parts of my life I, I feel like I'm just like not not to the level that you would want. And I think that's with everybody. I don't think you can expect a person to be the the best car salesman is not also the best friend. Mm -hmm. Like is that person's also not great at like mathematics. Like I'm mm -hmm. trying to say like don't you should strive to be a complete person I, I i believe in that but like i have flaws i have mm -hmm. definitive flaws and that's an expectation i think I, I speaking on expectations i think the outside expectation of me sometimes is that people want to hang out with me because they think i'm that guy on stage but really i like I don't, I don't, I never, I don't like going to strip. I mean, excuse me. I don't like going to any club. <laughs> Not just, you know why it's funny? Because actually I did a show in, in Miami Beach. I hosted a show in Miami Beach and I was having fun with like this group of guys or it was a bachelor party from out of state. And they approached me later and like, oh, bro, do you know where like the good strip clubs are at? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not the They're guy. They're like, oh, we want to party with you, bro. Come on, we take it. I was like, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. Bro. I'm off the clock. <laughs> I'm off. The, like, I did my my fun and games. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, and I I I, I like to say that because if anyone listening to the podcast is there thinking like, oh, this, this role is not. I'm I'm different. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm again. I'm really close to my family. Like. Some might say like irresponsibly close to my family. Um, <laughs> like I, I'm very laid back. I don't watch a lot of new shows. I just started rewatching The Sopranos recently. Okay, <laughs> like Tim will be very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the you know that it's true. Like I strive for every part of my life to be complete. Um, and like you said, I'm not perfect. Like. And I think that's what's wrong too. And we touched on this before, like with cancel culture, right? Like people aren't perfect and that's okay. And people should give more grace to people that maybe had said something that's not right. Because this is difficult. You know, the other day I was thinking, um, and, and like for me, it's almost like 
the person you see here, I'm the same, right? Like, I mean, you see me here and you see me outside. Sometimes I can mean be a little mean off camera, though. I mean, you've seen that side of me, too. Like, I'm a little feisty. But, you know, like, when you have this camera on you, there you know that people are watching and there are certain things that you need to, like, you know, sit back and not say. And you're very careful with that. But in your day-to-day, -day, like, sometimes you need to unwind and you say things that aren't right and you get... And that's okay. Like we're all human, right? For me, I, I, something that I've really been struggling is like the logical side of me. I am not logical. Like, <laughs> and, and that's a relationship with me and Eric. Like Eric is super logical. And for me, I'm like up in the clouds, man. I literally got a superlative in high school that said head in the clouds. That's what I won. <laughs> I won. <laughs> and you know, it, it's, um, it's a fault in me because when I'm not being logical and someone logical points something out, like you're not doing that the logical way, I need to check myself before I say, like spit something back at them. Like, what do you know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, but then it's, it, it's just taking those moments as learning lessons, right? Like if, it, yeah, seeing how people are, seeing how you're responding to certain situations just tells something about yourself. Whether it's a good or a bad thing, it's always going to tell something. And it, and sometimes I feel like we like to blame a lot and put a lot of blame on people. But ultimately, what I'm starting to realize is that if it's something in me that's going on and I see somebody else doing it, I need to check myself before I start, like, saying something unless it's truly them right but like yeah. but but first that's what i have to do that first so that i don't get myself into this big mess right i don't it's know tough. yeah it's, it's tough because again yeah we both want to be complete people and we both want to notice our flaws and work on them but like i i'm a i'm not a believer in multitasking mm -hmm. i'm a believer in doing one task at a time and completing one working on one issue at a time. So I have anger issues. I'll be honest. I have anger issues and I've been trying very hard to work on them. And I try to do like processes, like try to think logically, try not think with emotion, try not think about like, it, it's very difficult for me because I want people to see my perspective on things, mm -hmm. but that's me putting my opinions and my thought processes on people. And I shouldn't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. I need to like work on that. I need to be better on that. Um, do I sometimes succeed in those goals? Yes. Is there sometimes I do not? Yes. And it's something I do work and strive to work on. Uh, and it's, it's an ongoing problem. I don't know if it'll ever get resolved, but it is something I'm trying to work on to get better at because even though I am laid back, I, I am a, a classic bottler. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. that term. Like you bottle I, everything I will up. bottle everything up. I will make a ledger in my mind of all the wrongs that you've done to me. <laughs> You're terrible. And it, and it takes like just one last like, oh, you're going to do this one. <laughs> Pop the bottle. Uh, yeah. It, that's, there's this, go ahead. that's something you need to work on, Ro. <laughs> that is. And I, and I've gotten way better at that. I don't yeah, bottle yeah. as much anymore. I try yeah. to be upfront with my emotions and how I feel. But, um, oh man, there's a comedian who has a great bit about this. His name is Matt Bronger. It's called Coco the Gorilla. <laughs> and he, mm -hmm. he talks about that when he used to hang out with his ex girlfriend, that, um, every time that he would, because he had the same issue I did, that he would turn into Coco the Gorilla, basically. He'll get like into <laughs> the angry gorilla mode. Uh -huh. and, and the girlfriend would be like, Coco, no, Coco, no. <laughs> like, to it's, it's hilarious. It's a great bit. You gotta check it out. <laughs> Not wrong. Um, so it, those are the expectations I set for myself on a daily basis. I try to be the best complete person, that I, and I know there's going to be times I fail. I, mean, I know there's going to be times that I'm going to disappoint somebody, and it's uh, it's just part of the price of life. You can't be perfect. There is no perfect human being that's been on this earth, um, except for one, no, however you want to believe. Um, but... <laughs> It, except for a few, depending except on the religion. You know, whatever whatever belief system you have, and God bless you. You know, um, 
It, Mine's my dog. There you go. <laughs> Mine's Olivia. No. <laughs> um, there's no such thing as a perfect person. There's no such thing. And you got to realize that all human beings, no matter how good at whatever they do or however they excel, excel at something, it's just that we're all flawed in our own way. Mm -hmm. You know, we just got to know how to accept these flaws and know how to like work on them if we need to work on them or just let them be. And it's, you know, not to get very philosophical here. (laughs) Well, one thing before, because we're running out of time, but like one thing before, um, we log off or whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> I I was talking to uh, one of my good friends, a shout him out. His name's Matt, actually. And um, we were talking about how we're so ready to give advice sometimes because uh, we see s- certain flaws in other people and we're like, we know this. We know how to fix it. This is how you do it, right? And that's not the best approach I've learned because now I'm – And speaking with him, we're both on this track of saying, like, instead of giving advice, how about we just listen? We listen and then we ask questions. And I found that out, like, through certain interactions instead of, like, I, you know, you hear them struggling, you hear them going through something. And I used to be so quick to be like, well, this is what you need to do, blah, 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 like, fix it. Right. But I've, I'm changing that. And now I'm, just kind of being there and meeting them at that level and asking them questions. And then I start to ask questions and I start to realize that they know what's best for themselves. Sometimes they're just too clouded to see it, right? And when you start asking the questions to help them figure it out, you see the wisdom in them. So it's like two things are working. They're figuring it out for themselves. And then you yourself are finding a new perspective that you would have never heard before if you would have just gone straight to your advice, right? And um, yeah, it's been a beautiful process, honestly. So it's just a tip. Yeah, I am one of the worst. uh, Like I want to give advice all the time. I have no right in any any purpose to be giving Uh, advice to anyone, okay? Yeah, same. (laughs) Okay, I suck. And not that I suck. I, I just, I, I don't have the car I want. I don't live exactly how I want to live. But, I'm like, I am, am I relatively happy? Yes. Is there things that make me sad? Yes. Is there sadnesses I still deal with in my daily life? Hell yeah. But, I, I, you know, I get up every day. I make my bed. I go to work. do all the things. Um, but, yeah, don't, I mean, take any grain of salt with any advice I give. <laughs> no. Right. If I was yeah. good advice, I would still have hair. So, like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like for me, I it, it's very individual. I've come to find out because the advice that works for me may not work for that person. So, um, all I can do is listen, and then sometimes if they give me the space, I can tell them what my experience is of that. You know. Yeah. But yeah. that's as far as it should go. I agree. All right. Sweet. All right. Expectations. Expectations. <laughs> Keep your expectations within your bounds. Yes. And they're, they're not going to get to them. Or have or no expectations, right? Wasn't no it expectations. that? Yeah. yeah. Or have no expectations. Don't listen to advice or listen to all the advice. <laughs> listen to yourself. Or listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. <laughs> yes. You are more wise than you know. <laughs> All right. Um, Daisy, where can the nice people find you in your art? All right. So I'm at Daisy Vesiana on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Uh, find me and follow my journey. I'm not ready to get hired yet. I'll just <laughs> say that, but <laughs> I will be. I promise. Very humble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You make the decision. You're the wise <laughs> one. <laughs> Where can the nice people find you, Raul? Um, they can find me at on all social media at Funny Raul. Uh, the big plug is, and it's going to be for the next couple podcasts. You might get tired of me hearing say this. November twenty first, Miami Improv. I'm doing uh, shows called Elephants in the Room. It's a wonderful. It's going to be a, a awesome experience. We're actually me and the guys have been doing it. We're going to do an experience that I don't think any comedy show anywhere has ever done before. And I think it's going to be truly magical and a truly wonderful time. Please come out. 
Um, it's going to be a really awesome show. We already sold like 40 tickets to it. It's, it's going great. Um, please come on out is, and you're going to love it. I assure you. Dude, you um, piqued my interest. Like, you got to tell me what the magic thing is. Oh, <laughs> there's, man, we really, no, but legitimately we're doing things that like no other shows have done before. That was and, cool. Remember, you can follow us at Failing with Style on all social media. So, Failing with Style Pod, we are getting to Facebook. I am working on it actually as we speak, <laughs> and I'm going to try and get us on Spotify as well. I'm kind of doing again one task at a time, trying to get to it Same as dude. best I can. It's literally on my. I have a little task list. There you go, boom, and I'm like, like, it's on. It's on my task list. Nice. So don't worry. <laughs> it's the last thing on there. <laughs> it's literally like one because I'm like, oh god, this one is like. <laughs> That's all right, man. At least you have one. At least you have one. All right. Bueno, homies, thank you so much for coming and listening to us. Yes, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.